Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I'm fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. It has actually rained cats and dogs. Maybe you could let me know whether it has rained in your county. Today was a very interesting day in this country. It marked the end of the Supreme Court hearing. The day was quiet until Paul Mwangi introduced Jose Kamago into the picture and handed Jose Kamango or Kamago into the hands of Julie Soweto. And Julie Soweto did justice to Jose Kamango. She revealed what most Kenyans have always believed that the 2022 general election was actually stolen and that the forms which are being displayed on the IEBC portal were actually being generated from a different location. Listening to Paul Mwangi introducing Jose Kamango into the picture before leaving him in the hands of Julie Soweto. The, the last issue, and I, I follow this up with the, what my learned friend Maha did, I, I want to show the courts a Form 34A from a place called Gasharaigo Primary School, uh, and we are, it is in Moranga, in Kangema constituency, in a ward called Morogo, in stream two of two. And this document is overlaid over some documents, but look at the left hand top corner. It is overlaid over a document written Jose, this is uh, Jose Camargo. Jose Camargo is one of the Venezuelans that was arrested at the airport with charges of coming to interfere with the elections. He is one of the people that I, the last uh, Mahat has said, did not have access to the RTS. This form is in the official portal of IBC. The question would be, was this document photographed by a presiding officer at Gasharaigo Primary School, sometimes possibly at eight o'clock in the night? Or is it possible that this document has been photographed elsewhere in some office and uploaded? This, we ask the court to read the DCI report regarding Jose Camargo. And we believe, my lords, that these are the fingerprints of one of the suspects of the theft of this election. That is all. This is the IBC's own document. We're asking that you open on your own devices, but even as we show, Muranga County. Kagema, Kangema, Moguru, and Gasharaigo Primary School 02. This is live.
My lords and my ladies, we have downloaded a Form 34A from the IBC portal. And I'd like the court to just scrutinize this form before we go to other details. From where I am, the stump. My lords and my ladies, is that the IEBC stump? It's on the IBC portal, looking like it's been superimposed over another stamp. We have been asked to show how other figures changed. My lords and my ladies, if we look at the votes cast, the first figure on the form is for Raila Odinga, 55, it's followed by William Ruto, 260, it's followed by, I think that's Mwaure Waiga, 001, and the last is Wajakoya triple zero. If we sum up the total votes, we get 316. The total votes cast according to this particular form is 321, different from what we have just seen. The rejected votes are four, which means already by calculation there is a problem. But we'd like the court to look at the total number of registered voters. A close scrutiny of the form shows that the number was probably 455, and the five is actually similar to the, form, the figures written in the votes cast, but somebody or somehow that figure has been changed to make it look like 488. It is obvious to the naked eye when you look at that form. Now, when we go to now the bombshell itself, the top left hand corner of the form, We were told by my colleague, Mr. Gumbo, there were no foreigners in this election. We were told the foreigners left before the 8th of August. We were told they did not even have access to maintain the survey. This is on the 9th of August, and at the top left-hand corner there is the name of one of the Venezuelans. Jose Camargo. This is the person who decided the president-elect of the country. It is on the IEBC portal. It is live. And the impact of Julie Soweto's presentation shocked the IBC team. It shocked the Kenya Kwanzaa team. And I remember Senior counsel Gatia claiming that the forms which Julie Soweto introduced were actually fake forms. And you could also tell from lawyer Mohat Somane, the IBC lawyer, the heat he felt in the room. And he had to leave the room and he could be seen outside, walking up and down.
kile hawa hiyo I must confess that the IBC legal team did a fantastic job. And were it not for the for Julie Soweto, I doubt whether Azimio or Railu Dinga and Martha Karwa would have succeeded. Although the other petitioner, like that of uh, Omtata, and Halifa, probably those two would have gone through. But after Julius Soweto's presentation, it is now clear that William Ruto was actually elected the president of the Republic of Kenya by Jose Camargo in Venezuela. And there are several questions which Kenyans are asking. What was the role of Jose Camargo in this particular election? What was his role? Remember, the, I, the IBC procured election services, ICT, all the electronic system, and the printing. Printing was done in Greece by Lycos. The ICT infrastructure was also not from Venezuela. So those are the questions. And in their own wisdom, in their own wisdom, the Supreme Court judges Immediately the hearing began, issued two directives, which in my view will determine whether the elections is going to be nullified or not. The first directive they issued was that IBC ought to have granted Rail Odinga access to the servers. Because in 2017 petition, that did not happen. The second thing they did was to order for a recount in some, uh, were they 53 or were they 47? And when IBC did that, most Kenyans did not understand why IBC was doing that. And when the Supreme Court of Kenya made those two orders, most Kenyans did not really understand why IBC was doing that. On this channel, I promised to do an analysis about recount. But I held on because the Supreme Court was very clear that Kenyans should not discuss the matter, which was still in court, in public. So IBC wanted to achieve several things. The first reason why they ordered for the servers to be opened is that they wanted to check whether there were illegal access to the result transmission system, RTS. Because remember, in 2013, it was alleged that some people somewhere were changing. So you give these guys access so that they confirm. And there are several other things which they, wa they wanted to, to do. The second thing they wanted to confirm 
was whether it's possible to intercept Form 34As. Because remember, this election, elections in Kenya, are normally concluded at the polling station. So they wanted to check that. Because IBC did some mistakes, which in my view I think will be punished. In fact, if this election will be upheld, Wafula Chibukati is going to be a hero in this country. But if this election is going to be nullified, I can assure you Wafula Chibukati is going to be jailed. So Soweto, in her presentation, confirmed that indeed there were illegal access and there were interception of forms. The second thing which they did, which the Supreme Court ordered, was the recount. And why the recount? For the recount, the Supreme Court just wanted to check the variance in Form 34S vis-a-vis -vis those on the portal, the physical forms. So they wanted to check that if this form is this, then it's the same thing which is on Form 30 for on the portal. The other thing they wanted to check is whether there were fake polling stations. How do you identify fake polling stations? If you randomly pick polling stations and people created some fake polling stations, then you tell them to bring the ballot boxes. They will not be able to bring. For this exercise, five polling stations, five boxes could not be brought because probably they are fake. They also wanted to check whether fake forms were used. That's also important because the form which Julie Soweto used on the, on the, on the portal to demonstrate how Ruto was made the president was countered by IBC. I'm just trying to get the form. That form and the, <coughs> the <coughs> IBC tried so hard to explain. But there were so many things which are clear from that form. form. When that form was produced before court, Lady Justice Philomena Mwilu talked about it, asked for it. And the date was clearly marked according to the physical form she had. 7th of August. The form which was posted on uh, the portal is clearly marked 9th. Then if, even if you look at the stamps, Where they are placed is different. Different. So which means the form which IBC was presenting before the judges is not the copy of the form which is on the portal, which begs the question. Who generated that form on the portal? Now that's the biggest question. So the Supreme Court judges will have an easy time and a difficult time at the same time. Remember, <clears throat> the result of the, of the recount confirmed that Form 34A, two of two, because remember, Wafula Chebukati, in his schemes of freaking out Red Odinga, decided to print two similar forms. Nobody is able to understand this. And this is why Wafula Chibukati is going to go to court. You are supposed to print Form 34A for the presidential. One copy. Wafula Chibukati printed Form 34A, two copies. And when he was asked this, he said one will not be used. One will be put in a sealed envelope anytime. And the, the presiding officers who are actually trained 
that anytime you get access to the form, what you do, you put it in a sealed envelope, you don't use it. Then after the voting, it should find itself in the, in the box. Out of 47, out of 47 ballot boxes, 27 were missing. Where were they? So basically the 27 are the ones which were now being used to change the results and then forwarded to Camigo and Jose. <laughs> so if this election was actually rigged, then for me, I think we should not be conducting elections. We shouldn't. But let us wait for the court. Because the IBC tried to defend this thing and they claimed that there was a form, probably a document, which was placed when the photo was being taken. Which was okay. You can, uh, like, like I can take a photo. Let's say this is my, my, my book. I can take a, a photo when the pen is here. So when you take a photo when the pen is here, it will definitely, <laughs> the pen will definitely appear. So it's just the same like if there was another paper, it can capture. But it, uh, but the Azimio team were also able to demonstrate that indeed the Kemskit had a same serial number. I don't think anybody will escape that. If you have done uh, computer programming or basic of it, you know when you are uh, creating a database, you create tables. And when creating tables, you must have unique identifiers. And you make sure that those, that those unique identifiers cannot duplicate. So it means the two forms they demonstrated actually originated from the same chemskate. And probably if you read the Supreme Court report of uh, access to servers and the recount, most people believe that even that report is a bit doctored. But it has something. So the judges will make their own judgments based on the evidence. If they, as in, if they believe that whatever Julius Soweto presented will not persuade them, then it's okay. But as Kenyans, you also have your rights. Now you know what happened. Because cases are always prosecuted in the pub, court of public opinion and in the judiciary. Thank you, guys. We meet during the live stream today, later today. Thank you guys and we have a good day. Bye-bye.